Hey, it's me, Dr. T, and today I want to help you to spot fake science. So the lockdown period was a tough time for us all. And maybe like me, you were sent a lot of WhatsApp messages, Facebook messenger messages with scientific content that was questionable. Some of them seem convincing, others of them, you know, that was fake. How am I defining fake science, which is also known as pseudoscience? So this is science that has elements of being true. However, it is sprinkled with lies. First things first, where did you get your information from? If you got your information from WhatsApp, if you got your information from Messenger, there is a 99.9 .9 recurring percent chance that this is fake science. Actually, what I just said there was fake science because I cannot prove what I've said. However, if you're not hearing anything about it in the news, you have to question the information that you're given via these sorts of sources. Second tip, are there any obvious spelling or grammatical errors? Scientists, doctors, people in healthcare, professionals. We have spent a lot of time studying. We have written many reports. Maybe we have written some papers. Our command on the English language or whatever language you're writing in should be very good. Maybe the punctuation may not be great here and there, but overall we should be good at writing. When you see things with obvious spelling and grammatical errors, you have to question if they're truly written by someone who is professional in that field. At the very minimum, whoever is writing something as a scientist, as a doctor, healthcare professional, you should know how to use Microsoft Word or Apple Pages and use the spelling and grammar check function. If you're not a native speaker in that language, wisdom tells you to get someone who's a native speaker to check over what you've written. Generally, when I see things with a lot of spelling and grammatical errors, that raises a red flag for me. Third tip, if the person giving you the information or making claims says that they do not need to publish their claims, this is a very massive red flag. In fact, you should arrest the person because they're a suspect. As a scientist, as a doctor, when you make findings, when you have data research, you want to put it out there. You want your colleagues, your peers to know about it. You want them to scrutinize and look through it to see if what you're saying is true, to verify your claims, to see if you've included the right controls, all that sort of thing, just to make sure that you've not missed out anything when drawing your conclusions. So when someone says they don't need to publish their findings or their claims, that is a red flag. What do you have to hide? Fourth tip, who is giving you the information? Scientists, doctors, as I said, we spent a lot of time studying. Personally, apart from the first three years of life where I wasn't allowed to go to nursery, I've been studying back to back to back to back. Many of us didn't study for the sake of studying. We did it because we want to improve human health. We want to improve society through science and we have a passion for it. So when scientists, doctors, experts are giving information in their fields and this is verified by other scientists and doctors please listen to them when my aunt sue auntie gifty uncle marvin starts saying things like i drank water 15 times a day or every 15 minutes that's why i didn't have covid 19 or uncle marvin is saying that when you wear a mask it traps carbon monoxide please stop listening to them sometimes people seem convincing but please look at their background do they have any connection with medicine do they have medical knowledge Knowledge. Are they a scientist? Are they a doctor? Please do trust the professional. Fifth tip, what is the affiliation of the person who is giving you information? When you're writing research papers, there's usually a section in the paper where you have to declare any conflict of interest. So conflict of interest are things that can impede your professional judgment, whether consciously or subconsciously. So for instance, if someone is researching this particular brand of orange juice and they find that this particular brand of orange juice is the cure for cancer and then you realize that the person has stocks in that company the person is employed by the company or even that company paid them to do the research this is a red flag of course you're not going to be digging into everyone's affiliations that's why it's important that scientists and doctors are honest however when people make groundbreaking discoveries or things that can change the way treatments are given these sort of things people will look into their history people will look into their affiliations their connections another tip does the paper or the person speak in absolutes so what do i mean by absolutes for instance if the person says this is a hundred percent 
chance of happening. This is the only cure. Things along these lines are speaking in absolutes. Rarely in science do we ever speak in absolutes. We usually say, This suggests this could happen. There's a high probability of this occurring. We rarely ever, ever say things with 100% certainty. When someone is speaking like that, that should raise a red flag. If you're making these kind of claims, you need very, very, very strong evidence, very strong data to back up your claims. If someone is speaking in absolutes and even in the field there is controversy, there is contention, again, whatever that person is saying, raise that red flag. At best, what they're saying may not be 100% certain. At worst, it could be an outright lie. In these times, a lot of people are capitalizing on people's fears and emotions and creating a lot of distrust in science, in scientists, in medicine. And I feel like it's very unhelpful. Please don't just believe people because they're charismatic speakers, but do try and listen to the professionals. Recognize that the professionals are professionals for a reason. I would say a lot of scientists, a lot of doctors, professionals, medical professionals want the best for humanity, want the best for society. So I hope that this has given you a few more tools to use in order to spot fake science.